Hi, welcome to Why Do Catholics Do That? I'm Mary Sampi. This is episode two, and we are walking through the Mass. Last episode, we discussed the gathering rites, and today we're going to walk through the Liturgy of the Word. So when you gather at a friend's house for a meal, you always begin with a conversation. At Mass, after the rites of gathering, we sit down and listen as the readings of the Word of God are proclaimed. When the Word of God is proclaimed from the ambo or the pulpit, Christ is really and truly present to his people. On Sundays, there are three readings from the Bible. So the first reading will be from the Old Testament Hebrew scriptures, um, except of course during the Easter season. But in this first reading, we recall the origins of the covenant that God has made with us. This Old Testament reading will relate to the gospel selection and will give us a background and an insight into the meaning of what Jesus is going to do in the gospel. After the first reading, we sing or recite a psalm, a song from God's own inspired hymnal, the book of Psalms found in the Old Testament. The second reading will usually be one of the letters of Paul or another apostolic writing. After the second reading, um, we sing or say the Alleluia, which is a Hebrew word meaning praise the Lord. Now, we do not sing this right now because we are in the season of Lent, but we get this word from the book of Revelation as it is repeatedly used. So whether said or sung, the word calls the congregation to abandon our posture of sitting, which is a gesture of receptivity. We have been actively listening to the word of God. And when we hear the word Alleluia, we stand out of respect for Christ, who will become even more immediately present in the gospel reading. This gospel is always from one of the four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. Some visitors to the Catholic Mass might be surprised that we're reading from the Bible. <laughs> our readings come directly from the Bible and also some of our prayers like the Holy, Holy, Holy and the Our Father. And most of our responses and the phrases of the prayers used at Mass are also directly taken from the Bible. After the Alleluia, because of the unique presence of Christ in the proclamation of this gospel, it has been a long custom to stand in reverence to get ready to hear these words. We believe that Christ is present in his word. The priest will then greet us, the Lord be with you, and we say, and with your spirit. He then introduces the gospel reading while marking a small cross on his forehead, his lips, and his heart with his thumb, while praying silently that God cleans his mind and his heart, so that his lips may worth worthily proclaim the gospel. So we do this with the priest, and I like to tell the children, especially children's liturgy of the word, that when you're saying this, that you should pray, let the words of the gospel be in my mind, on my lips, and in my heart. So when the priest says, then, after the conclusion of it, the gospel of the Lord, we respond, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Again, we're proclaiming our faith in the presence of Christ in the word that we just heard. We then sit for the homily. Now, we call this a homily. If you go to another denomination, they might call this a sermon. And the priest follows the example of Christ on the road to Emmaus, explaining and interpreting the scriptures. Sometimes this interpretation is biblical, sometimes theological, sometimes moral or catechetical. Always, however, in the imi imitation of the Emmaus encounter, where Christ was made known in the breaking of the bread, it should prepare the congregation for uh, or point us toward what is about to follow in the liturgy of the Eucharist. So the homily takes the word and brings it to life in the situation today, just as the large piece of bread is broken to feed individual persons. The word of God must be broken open so that it can be received and digested by the congregation. After the homily, we stand and together recite the creed. The creed is more than just a list of things that we believe. 
It is a statement of our faith in the word we have heard proclaimed in the scripture and the homily and a profession of faith that leads us to give our lives for one another as Christ gave his life for us. Notably, in the middle of the creed are the words, and by the power of the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary. The congregation bows, acknowledging the importance of the incarnation. It's important to remember that this creed that we've had has been our creed since the fourth century. So it is a long-standing tradition, and it just shows the unity of our faith across time. After our creed, we say the liturgy, we do the universal prayer, um, which is also known as the intercession, and this is going to end the liturgy of the word. The intercessions help us to become who God is calling us to be. We are the body of Christ by baptism. Now, as we prepare to approach the table for Eucharist, we look to the readings like a mirror and ask, is that who we are? Does the body of Christ present in this assembly resemble the body of Christ pictured in the scriptural readings? So we make some adjustments. If not, we pray that our assembly really comes to look like the body of Christ, a place of peace, a body of peace with shelter for the homeless, healing for the sick, food for the hungry. So we pray for the church healing for the sick, food for the hungry, nations and our leaders, and people in special needs. And these petitions usually fall into one of these categories. A minister will announce the petitions, and we are usually given an opportunity to pray for the intentions in our heart, making some common response aloud like, Lord, hear our prayer. That ends the Liturgy of the Word. Next time, we're going to discuss the Liturgy of the Eucharist or meal sharing. Until then, I hope you have a blessed day and that this has been helpful for you helpful to you. Should you have any further questions, you can always email the parish office or myself at msampi at cdsmph.org. God bless. Have a great day.